Morning, folks. With the day off yesterday, one presumes you are all brain awake and firing on all cylinders ready for top-level science news and space weather. We'll try not to disappoint as we begin at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last 24 hours on our star crackling. Small CME due to impact tonight, and if you didn't catch another small eruption in this 24-hour sequence, we'll be zooming in and replaying it twice here. It was a small eruption, minor plasma ejection, only maybe coming our way, but of absolutely no concern with its small size. The solar wind is amplified right now due to the coronal hole stream, but its stability has allowed Earth's field to adjust, and if anything, minor geomagnetic effects are expected from those coming impacts. A moment here hitting back at the fact that they don't know NOVA events. We have constantly seen new types of NOVA, new pre-NOVA environmental conditions, and here we see the biggest of the NOVA events, shattering expected maximum luminosity profiles, and telling them once again, no. You don't know what we are. This next one is a strike for both the climate science and the catastrophism studies related to Earth's changing magnetic field. We are back at the thermosphere here and the super rotation forcing is confirmed, complementing the previously confirmed density and wind speed forcings by the sun. But here, we also see the magnetic field changes of Earth play a role in thermospheric super rotation as well. Of course, the scary part of the down-the-line details from this field weakening is the charging up and ultraconductivity profiles of the ionosphere amplify. Again, this is the explanation we gave for the previous papers as the reason for why the ionosphere is still perturbed like it was 40 years ago, despite lower solar activity. Our planetary field is tanking. Slipping back towards climate for a moment, we see the reorganization evidence of the aspects of the ocean responsible for the secular variation of the AMOC. If you'll recall, it's changing in ways that paleoclimatologists have identified can lead to melt-driven cooling of the planet through chilling and freshening of the oceans and a reduction of its heat transport. Most of the papers we've seen have been about the past events triggering ice ages. This one continues to identify those changes happening now. Of course, the most major variations of that occur on 1,500, 6,000, and 12,000 year cycles. Welcome to the first ever identification of the second dansgaard oschger event of the Holocene from the solar side. Often called a bond event, while we've seen tremendous confirmation of the earthly effects on ice and temperature, this is the solar side of it. Estimated solar flare power, approximately X40 to X100. And last but not least, the Earth's magnetic field rapid variations are beginning to creep forward in understanding. Now this paper was written before the publication we saw two days ago on the 15th explaining why the core energy bled out so quickly and we had rapid reversals every 10 to 12,000 years, but its identification of the faster than expected variability is the other side of the coin. Not just what it's doing, but why. The maturation of the magnetic excursion field is nearly complete and just in time for the next disaster. We greatly appreciate your support. Minor space weather coming our way. Eyes open for more on the sun. If you haven't checked out the Big Burb channel, follow the link below in the description box to see our building of the disaster vehicle. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.